Hi, I'm Dr. Christiane Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body. And I'm here to tell you how to use this knowledge to transform your health and truly flourish. I believe that information is power, and I'm all for patients, people, taking an active role in their own health. For years, I have recommended that women use reputable home medical tests as a way of taking charge of their health. With so many home medical tests on the market now, the question is not, can you test for a specific condition, but should you? Now, I still believe that in some instances, home medical tests can give you the information and confidence you need to take control of your health. But I don't recommend every home test out there. More and more tests are providing complex health information, and there's always the risk of misinterpreting the results. Also, there's a risk of putting too much emphasis on the test results that may not give you the whole picture. So in this video, I'll tell you what at-home medical screening tests I recommend and when to use them, plus how to use your test results to actually improve your health instead of make you worry. What are the types of home medical tests? So there are many home medical tests on the market today that include diagnostic tests like for HIV, UTIs, urinary tract infections, allergies, pregnancy, and more. There are hormone tests. There are sex hormone tests, thyroid tests, baseline or measurement tests, blood sugar, cholesterol. Most tests require a drop of blood, a swab of saliva, a urine or stool sample. Many are finger prick tests, and these are standard for people with diabetes to measure their blood sugar levels. There are urine tests. Most are commonly associated with at-home pregnancy tests, and they've been used since the 1970s as an accurate measure of determining whether or not you're pregnant. The pregnancy test tests urine for the assay of human chorionic gonadotropin, a hormone that the body begins to produce once an embryo has attached to the uterine wall, which is only like five days after conception in some cases. Now, some home medical tests give instant results. Others take days or weeks after being sent off to a lab. The benefits of do-it-yourself medical tests are that they're convenient and discreet. They typically are inexpensive, though some can be pretty pricey. So how do you know which home medical test to purchase? Any home medical test you see on a pharmacy shelf has generally been approved by the FDA, and this means the agency has reviewed test data from the manufacturers to make sure that the kits are easy to use, that people can get results by following the directions. But this doesn't necessarily make it a good choice. Home medical tests are considered medical devices, and as such, they get to the market faster than drugs. The FDA doesn't guarantee that the readings will always be correct. Test results can be wrong, and even if the results are correct, they can give false reassurance or cause false concern. Home medical tests that you can find online should also have been approved by the FDA. Here are some precautions to apply, though. You need to do your own research on the test manufacturer, confer with trusted sources, especially if the test is really expensive. Always show the results to your healthcare provider who can confirm them and recommend treatment if necessary. And remember, false positive results can be alarming because we've been taught to give our power away to a test that measures simply a point in time on a graph and our bodies are always changing. So, valid home medical test companies that I like include grassrootshealth.net. It's a nonprofit. It's backed by tons of scientific medical research on vitamin D. My Med Lab is good. Planet Naturopath. The Dutch test is very good for hormone testing. It stands for Dried Urine Test for Comprehensive Hormones, Dutch. So, which test do I recommend? Simple at home diagnostic tests that detect a single biomarker in the body can be good for certain people because it's either there or it's not. That's how a pregnancy test works. Every woman who thinks she's pregnant can pee on a stick. It's low risk if there's a false positive. Sometimes there's a false negative, but you follow up with a healthcare practitioner. There's also HIV test kits. A blood or saliva test can determine if you are infected with the virus. And a blood test you can send to the lab. A saliva test gives you results in 20 minutes. Having the information can help you figure out the next step in treatment or medical care. 
People who should use this HIV test might include high-risk individuals such as sexually active adults not in a long-term monogamous relationship, those who don't want to be tested in a doctor's office. As an aside, about 25% of those with HIV are 55 or older. Older people are more likely to be diagnosed when the disease is more advanced. Blood glucose tests are very, very good. Results are instant, and they can help you maintain your health. If you have diabetes, they can monitor your blood sugar levels, or you can let your provider know if your medications need to be adjusted. Blood glucose tests can also be diagnostic. It's estimated that 40% of adults are unaware that they have type 2 diabetes. And frankly, I'll tell you that your fasting blood sugar should be below 90 because so many people have high blood sugar now, like 100 is considered okay, but it's better if fasting is down to 90, 80 is even better than that. And then you can also test how much your blood sugar has spiked after a meal it shouldn't go much beyond 120. Uh, so if you get a home test kit, it's very easy to follow that. If you have symptoms that include obesity, high blood pressure, excessive thirst or hunger, frequent urination, a family history, then a blood glucose test may give you a better picture and being proactive may save you trouble down the road. There are a number of blood glucose meters and test strips on the market in any pharmacy. A vitamin D test is very, very helpful. Optimal vitamin D is necessary for the health of every cell in your body, and vitamin D influences over 2,000 genes in your body. Vitamin D deficiency is epidemic, and it can result in many diseases, including diabetes, hypertension, depression, rheumatoid arthritis, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue, osteoporosis, Alzheimer's, and even cancers of the breast, prostate, and colon. Testing is easy. You prick your finger, you send the blood sample into the lab. Results are clear and actionable. Then you can take a vitamin D supplement if your levels are too low. Most people feel way better when their levels are between 40 and 80 nanograms per milliliter. I like the Grassroots Health Vitamin D test because of the information they provide to help you. Plus, you can test your omega-3 fat levels as well. So that's grassrootshealth.net. Vaginal pH. Health screening tests to determine your vaginal pH can help you determine whether or not you have a yeast infection or are susceptible to them. And then you can buy an over-the-counter antifungal drug to treat the problem. So this can really be a helpful test for women to avoid having to go to the doctor. But if you see a doctor and your symptoms don't improve or if they could recur, it might indicate a different infection, one that requires an exam or other lab tests. There are microbiome tests. You know that 80% of your immune system is in your microbiome. That is the bacteria and viruses that live in the opening of your body. Your gut microbiome needs to be balanced to stay healthy. We know that the microbiome is kind of like another organ in the body. So microbiome tests tell what beneficial organisms you have, as well as any pathogens that may be contributing to any digestive symptoms or conditions, including irritable bowel syndrome, inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. These tests can help you monitor your overall gut health over time. Now, which tests should you avoid? Many health conditions aren't straightforward, so I don't recommend home testing for the following. Allergies will show up and the tests will show that you're allergic to or sensitive to things that you're currently exposed to, and that doesn't mean you have an allergy to it. It's better to have a professional allergist do the testing. Colon cancer screening. Now, many people avoid colonoscopies because of the discomfort and the risk of infection or intestinal perforation. Good reasons, right? However, the home stool tests may not provide accurate results. So if you use one, do it at least three different times, like three different bowel movements. This will improve results. And it's better to ask your health care provider for fecal occult blood tests if you are at risk or having symptoms. Thyroid disease is another really complex condition, and if you want to do a test for it, use the Dutch test that I mentioned before. Just Google Dutch test. But be sure to see your healthcare provider who can help you accurately interpret your results and determine what treatment you may need. Now, cholesterol test kits. Most kits test only for total cholesterol. 
But total cholesterol alone really doesn't tell you much of anything. Total cholesterol tests don't provide accurate information about your cardiovascular risk. You need to know that. Cholesterol level alone tells you almost nothing because it is oxidated LDL cholesterol that increases your risk. Nor do total cholesterol tests tell you much about the impact of diet or exercise on your cholesterol. You really need a full lipid profile to understand the picture. So get test kits that measure LDL, HDL, VLDL, and triglycerides as well as total cholesterol because triglycerides are an independent risk factor, particularly in women. And you wanna know your ratio of LDL to HDL. Now, if you're being treated with a cholesterol-lowering drug, it may make sense to check your total cholesterol levels at home every 6 to 12 months to see whether or not the drugs are helping. If your level seems high, then you can let your doctor know. Don't adjust your medications on your own. Uh, that's always a good rule of thumb. However, you've got to be working with a healthcare professional who has you as a partner so that the two of you are working together. Now, genetic testing. I never recommend these tests unless you're working with a good genetic counselor. Here's why. They are not diagnostic. I work with a good genetic counselor and geneticists are astounded by what they're finding. They're finding in 40-year-olds, in 50-year-olds, genes that they thought would lead to all kinds of problems. And they don't because how a gene is expressed is totally dependent on your environment. So genetic testing doesn't provide actionable information. They can be easily misleading. Remember, your genes are not necessarily your destiny. Genes cause less than 10% of all diseases, and you can change how your genes are expressed by even changing your beliefs. Hormone testing. It's controversial because tests measure just one single point in time. So for instance, a testosterone test, testosterone should be highest in the morning lowest at night. But what if you get your test at night because you were driving home from work and that's when you had time to test and it's low. Then you think you have a problem. You don't. So this is true whether you use blood, saliva, or urine. Hormones fluctuate wildly throughout the day and they fluctuate depending on what you're thinking. Results depend on what you eat, your activity level, the time of day, and your nutritional status. I used to recommend that women test their hormones by getting a baseline and then test by when they're having symptoms or to monitor hormone replacement therapy. And that's a good idea if you are on prescription hormones. However, I still think in certain cases, hormone testing can be a good thing, but it needs to be done in a lab that has a lot of experience. I prefer the Dutch test by Precision Analytical. It's a dried urine test for comprehensive hormones. You collect your samples throughout a 24-hour period, so that gives you a bigger picture. And it's much more accurate than a blood test, and it provides a full hormonal picture. There are many more home medical tests that I haven't covered. You got to use your intuition, maybe muscle testing or a pendulum, to determine what tests are right for you. So how do you use your test results? If you use any of the home medical tests I recommend, or even if you don't, or even if I don't recommend them, be sure to look for trends over time. Don't take one test result or one data set as the final answer. It's astounding to me. I have watched people's hemoglobin and hematocrit change like as though they had a transfusion within two hours. This is astounding. People, you know, your body is a river of information. It's not a static place and time. Work with your healthcare provider. Self-diagnosis carries risks. And when taking any test, you need to take in context. Be sure to understand your result. Don't begin any treatment plan based on your own do-it-yourself medical tests until you're clear about what exactly you're trying to achieve. Again, it's best to consult a knowledgeable healthcare provider who understands partnership. And it's best if they are trained in what's called functional medicine, which acknowledges the role of food, emotions, and so on. Finally, remember, it's always best to put your faith in your own body and the fact that you can change it, not in a test. 
For more inspirational tips, visit my blog and exploredrnorthrop.com, where you will find wisdom for your body, mind, and spirit. Visit daily to discover the connection between your thoughts, beliefs, physical health, and life circumstances. And remember, you are in the driver's seat of your health, and you can make profound changes.